Hey, product launchers, Tracy Hazard here, and I have a brand new expert to introduce you to, so I'm super excited about that. I have a Perva Batra from Flexible Pouches, and they're out of Texas, and oh my gosh, she has, I can't even wait for you to hear all the stuff that they can do for you. But what is so cool about this, and what I really, uh, why I'm bringing him on as an expert on the platform is because he fits completely in line, and Flexible Pouches fits completely in line with what we do here, which is that we wanna test. So they're one of the few packaging companies that do smaller runs so that you can make sure your product's ready to go. You can make sure this packaging is really doing the right things for you. Uh, and it, this is just so critically important. As you all know, it's like, you know, you make this giant run and then you find out, oh, that didn't work. That wasn't right. <laughs> and now you're in trouble. And he understands that and he gets it and he's developed his services and his products and his company around that. So I am so excited to introduce you to him. And also because we don't have enough packaging experts. If you haven't found out, they're like, it's so hard if you don't know already, but I have no package designer as an expert on our platform yet. I have package designers I refer people to, but they're so busy, they don't want to market themselves because they don't want more clients. <laughs> So that's kind of nerd, I guess, to be a packaging nerd, but you know, that's, that's, you know, just, you hit it right on the nail there. And, you know, that's, that's sort of the forte. I mean, uh, I started this company a few years ago, uh, sort of with the aim to level the playing field, because historically speaking, you find that, you know, a lot of the smaller companies are unable to compete when it comes to, you know, the, the, the big competitors, the big corporations there. And so, um, you know, we wanted to create an outlet where small companies that are either going through a product launch or in their growing phase can, can come to, to get high quality, affordable packaging that's either as good as the big boys or even better, right? And so, you know, product packaging is, you know, it's, it's a whole behemoth in and of itself, but and I think it's one of the areas where a lot of small companies tend to overlook, right? Especially during the product launch. Right. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'll just package it later. Like it's like, a, right, right, right. and it's right. not, it's something you have to think about early in the process. That's right. That's right. And I mean, I think the, the, the key aspects of effective product packaging, if small businesses can kind of harness them, uh, they can leverage them in order to create a sustainable brand that ultimately does resonate with the consumer. So, and that's, yeah. that's the end goal. Yeah. Well, let's talk about you. <laughs> so you're so, based out of Texas. Is it Houston, right? Houston based area? out of Houston. That's right. And uh, we have been flexible pouches. Um, you know, we've been around for a few years, for about five years now. Uh, we serve um, clients ranging from fortune companies all the way to small businesses, mom and pop, startups, medium businesses. So we've got a pretty, pretty good portfolio. I mean, you can probably go to um, any of the major retailers and find a package that we've manufactured and supplied. And so... Uh, my personal background actually is, uh, is a technical background in engineering. I'm a mechanical engineer by background uh, with an emphasis on material science. And so I have sort of that understanding as far as what materials may be required, as far as what the functionality of the package may be and how it, how it applies to each product uniquely. And so um, we cater you know, quite a bit to the food space, you know, the food industry, um, but our markets span, you know, you know, medical marijuana these days is, is pretty big. There's a lot of laws around child-resistant packaging. Um, we recently did a job for a client that does shoe inserts, and so they wanted to package those in flexible bags. And so, you know, it, everything under the sun, I think, can be packaged in, in, in flexible bags. Obviously, there's a trend in the industry to go flexible. You find soup these days, you know, that was almost yeah. a soup can, and now that's in flexible pouches as well. And so, um, you know, we're, you know, we're here to kind of steer brands in the right direction. And, you know, for all, you know, all brands may not necessarily need to go the flexible route. It may not be appropriate, but I think there is a certain, um, common theme in terms of starting on your package design early in order to create a sustainable long-term brand. So, you know, that's, yeah. that's well, you know, I think you bring up a really, really good point though, that, you know, there's a lot of considerations around, um, that come early on. How am I going to package something is one of those things in the really early days, because one of the most important things that we come up with is like how much space something takes. Right. So today, shelf space matters, how much something's going to weigh, how much, how many I can put in a box and ship it to into right. Amazon. Like, Definitely. like these are a huge consideration. And so not understanding how you're going to pack it or how you can pack it efficiently right. early on in the development process is it can really cripple you and, and yeah. hurt you later when you go right. come and realize it was bigger than you planned. I mean, it's a balancing act, right? I mean, there's, there's a balance between functionality, between aesthetics and cost, right? And so kind of like you said, especially with Amazon, they've got 
you know, strict rules in terms of if it weighs this much or if it's a millimeter too big, it falls into the next category and so forth, right? And so, uh, you know, people tend to kind of forget about that and just get into this grind of let me perfect my product. And they have this, you know, sometimes a false pretense that if my product is absolutely perfect, it'll sell. Well, you know, that's, oh, that's we debunk that all the time here. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, you know, that's kind of where we come into play. And what we start with is trying to emphasize the importance of your packaging, right? I mean, your packaging is the very first interaction that a consumer has with your product all the way from the retail shelf or the online search result. And so uh, your packaging being the voice of your product, it has to do a number of different things. First and foremost, attract a prospective customer. You can have the best product in the world, but I don't care which industry you're in, there are dozens and dozens of competing, you know, competing products that are out there. And um, you know, consumers are impulsive. If you, if you are, your package fails to adequately attract a consumer, lure it uh, on the store shelf, then it doesn't matter how good the product is because you know, they're never gonna get to it. This is um, so true. <laughs> so, so true. So now let's talk about what you guys do because uh, so you, you're helping them formulate the, the, what package, what's the right package. Right. And there's so many material choices and considerations. Exactly. Let's talk about that because sure. I think people don't really realize the quality and lifespan implications of material choices, right? Exactly. No. And so, uh, you know, fl flexible packaging is uh, basically the term applied to anything constructed out of barrier films, right? So barrier films, are engineered films, uh, generally poly, but sometimes metal, sometimes craft paper, uh, and sometimes other materials that uh, are there. And to when serve. you say metal, people would more think of them like your average lay person would call them foil packaging. Well, yes, yeah, so yes, and no, actually, and that's a big nomen oh. uh, that's a big distinction actually. And, and most people, even in the food industry, sometimes get hung up on this. Um, there's a difference. The two most commonly used metal films, if you will. There's a metallized polyfilm, and then there's aluminum foil, and there's a big difference between them, obviously. Um, metallized poly is a film where you, it, it's plastic based and then you have a little bit of a spray of aluminum, if you will, onto it, but it is still a polyfilm at the end of the day. Um, aluminum foil is actually a layer of aluminum foil that we sometimes put into the package into a laminate. And, um, you know, that does wonders for your shelf life, depending on the product that you're packaging. And so at the end of the day, if these materials are basically individual barrier films that are sandwiched together, laminated, generally each one serves a unique purpose. And so... You know, we get so many startups and new businesses that come in, they've got the perfect recipe for their new organic cookies, but they have no idea what materials to go for. So, well, we'll kind of advise them and say, well, depending on your shelf life requirements, depending on how you are filling these, depending on your operations, you know, you might need a metallized or actually you might actually just want a clear poly base laminate. And so that material section is an integral part of, of our service to prospective clients and advising them on how to actually go about starting with the material selection process. Wow. Yeah. And so critically important because, you know, this is also a consumer perception issue. So it has a, a like a quality level perception, like, oh, this is, you know, more sealed, it's safer, you know, there's a whole, and it, and it may have nothing to do with it because I've seen some packaging that, that people go, oh, that looks really safe and totally was not. <laughs> but, you know, so it, it, you have to really match not just with what exactly. the qualities you need, but the quality the market expects. Well, the quality of market expense, and, and again, you know, we talked about how the package is the first interaction with, uh, with your product that a consumer has, and also it's sometimes the only differentiator, right? So <laughs> yeah. if you go to the store shelf and, you know, you see a bag that's, you know, leaking, not sealed, something's wrong with it, uh, you know, they, that, that automatically is like, well, no, I'm not going with that one, right? And so um, there's a lot of, you know, intricate details that need to be kind of considered up front. And so, you know, that's again where we come into play and make sure that everything is, uh, packaged properly so that uh, you know you stand up from the competition. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, uh, you know, you talked about small runs. So, mm -hmm. how how small? I mean, you know, like right. you know, how small do you, can you yeah. go with the way that you guys work? So we uh, are one of the only uh, packaging suppliers out there in the flexible space that will print fully custom branded flexible bags in quantities as few as one thousand units. Wow, um, that is really, I mean, if those of you who see, think a thousand units is high, you guys have known nothing because that right. is really low. <laughs> that's right. I mean, historically, about 10 years ago, it wasn't unheard of for the minimum to be on the order of 50,000 units plus, yeah. right? And so, you know, that's kind of where the industry has been. And so we have a unique business model where we um, were able to kind of leverage that, that, you know, those minimum runs and, um, you know, on a mass scale. And so, you know, that thousand run, by the way, if it's the same size, you know, stand-up pouch, for example, we can split that up into two, three SKUs as well. And so it could be as low as 300, 500 SKU. 
And so, you know, that is really. Oh, so like if you have, you know, you have, uh, you know, five different, as you were saying, cookies before, that's one right. might be a green bag, a blue bag, a, a red exactly. bag, like that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. And so one might be, you know, your caramel flavor, one might be, you know, white chocolate or so forth, right? Okay, and now so... you're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I don't think, I can't remember the last time I actually ate a cookie. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you know, that is, that's really valuable too. So, and sure. you know, really, you couldn't have done this business. I don't know, 15 years ago, because no, digital printing has changed everything. I mean, you know, well, the technology has really changed your business. Exactly. No, and, and, you know, we leverage the technology as well. And so I will say on flexible film printing technology, there's you know, two primary methods, which is one is the offset printing, which uses the plates and cylinders. And so that's still probably the bulk of what we do in terms of volume. And that's where you have a minimum of you know, five to 10,000 per, per SKU or per design. Um, but that's the, the economical way to go. Obviously, it's a little bit higher quality. But uh, what's happened in recent years is, um, you know, some of these digital presses, specifically uh, one by HP, it's called the HP Indigo 20,000. Uh, they came out about three years ago, and it is the mother of all, you know, digital printing presses, if you will. Um, obviously, it's not cheap, but uh, it allows us to do those 1,000 minimum runs and still be on par with, uh, you know, Hershey's and some of the big brands that are out there because um, 10 years ago, we didn't have the technology. And, right. so now, and now we do. And now we do. And our turnaround times for that are actually pretty quick as well. We can turn those around in a matter of about a week, week and a half, actually. And so, again, it's the fastest lead time in the industry. It's the lowest minimum in the industry. And so, um, you know, as long as, as long as brand owners, specifically smaller new product launch uh, companies can kind of focus on their packaging, you know, we can kind of help them get to where they need to go. So now what about like, you know, at the end of the day, it all comes down to, of course, how you fill your package too. So you're creating the package, but you're not filling them with items. We don't fill them, no. And right. most clients of ours, I mean, they, you know, depending on how big or small they are, they may be contracting out the actual filling operation to a co-packer, right? A contract packager or a contract manufacturer. And so those are the companies that actually will, um, you know, create, if you're doing protein powder, for example, they'll manufacture protein powder in a certified facility and they'll have a filling line where they can actually fill your pouches. We do work with those contract manufacturers in order to make sure that the package requirements are adequate. And so, for example, you know, that some of them needed to be sealed a certain way. Some of them need certain sides to be open, depending on the orientation of their fill process. So we can work with those guys and again, alleviate. So, so see collaboration guys, this is the key here, right? Like this is why I, I always try to find you experts who not only are really experts and have great skill sets and, and deep experience in what they're doing and what they're talking about, as you can see by some of you might have glazed over with the technicalness because I know some of you are just, you know, like top level visionaries. And I love that about all of you guys listening out there, but we need somebody with the technical on our team, right? Like for us. That's, that's our premise at the end of the day. You know, we don't want, uh, you know, if you're making, if you're making organic cookies, protein powder, crackers, or shoe soles, whatever it is, you, you know, you're the expert in, in your field. And so our job is to kind of take away the headaches associated with the technical aspects of product packaging design, um, work with your co-packer, your filling facility, or work with you depending on how you are actually filling the product, and uh, make sure we deliver something that works, right? That's functionally uh, adequate, fit for purpose, and uh, sells well on the store shelves. So do you help, so talking about things that we see a big trend in resealable packaging. So do you have part of your, a uh, part of your line where you insert the, the, like the That's resealable right. zip? That's right. And you know, if you notice, um, across a, a number of product categories, and again, this might be uh, a little bit skewed towards the food CPG brands, but, um, you know, more and more products are in resealable bags and, uh, you and I have all been there, you know, we buy a big chips bag and then it, uh, you know, we forget to seal it or something and they go stale the next week. And so, uh, there was a study that was published last year actually, and it said, um, 75% or more of customers are more likely to purchase a product, a food product, if it is resealable, especially if it's not a single serve. And so, um, you know, that, that's one of the reasons why so many brands are going out there with the resealability. And so 90% of everything we sell has a resealable zip lock on it, um, just because that's the it's, answer, right? it's shocking. But I also see a big trend in, in, you know, smaller size packaging, portability, single packs, right. like there's a lot that's of this right. going on. And I think, you know, a lot of you guys out there who are producing products are underestimating the value of having both things, both that's options right. for your clients, because there's a lot of, we all travel and we all need to that's take right. stuff with us. I mean, I can't tell you of, of, almost all, all of our clients 
um, that are at least doing the roto runs. Everybody who's in the, you know, who's, who's actually made it, established their brand. They've got so many different SKUs, but then they've got those same SKUs in the single serve size, right? So that might be a different type of package. It might be a flat three side seal bag, no zipper needed, just a tear notch or something. Um, but, um, you know, having that, uh, that visibility, if you will, gives your brand that boost that it needs, because, you know, if you can have your consumers, you know, travel with your bags as, or travel with your product as well as buy it for their house, that's, you know, that's, that's the way to go at the end of the day. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm seeing that, you know, trends happening like that. And, uh, and I think there was a couple of trends happening like that in, in the supplement industry and, um, and it started and I think it might've been a before it's time, but I'm seeing it come back again in various areas. And that's because all of us are, are doing our regimens and programs and we're all still staying active and we need to take stuff that's with right. us next and, that's you know, right. throwing them in little baggies on our own is a little, you know, um, a little, uh, underserving your customer. Right. right. And And so you've got to look at the competition, right? I mean, failure to acknowledge competition is one of the primary reasons small businesses tend to sort of overlook that packaging. They forget a, that, you know, the you know, all the competitors are, are, are packaging with products, you know, in your category, maybe in single serve as well as large size, as well as, you know, the normal resealable size. And so, you know, one of the things we say is that your product, you know, going out and assessing your competitors packaging, can give you insight into how to design even your product, right? So it's, you know, they're all interconnected in some sense, but, um, you know, packaging is sort of the common theme that, you know, binds everything together. Right. Um, so, and we're also seeing kind of a trend in what I'm going to call frustration-free packaging. So sure. I, I told this really, I, I, it was one of those days, you know, you buy like the giant pack at Costco or something. And so I bought the giant pack of razor blades at Costco, yeah. right? Uh, you know, razors for women and the whole thing. And I'm trying, I, I jumped in the shower, forgot that it was, that I didn't have a razor in there, got back out. I'm wet. I'm trying to open this package. I don't have yeah. scissors in my bathroom, right? I cannot, I'm like, you know, five minutes later, still trying to get this package apart. When I finally get it apart, like razors explode all over the bathroom, right? And this is, it just makes you go like, why did I do this? Why did what? I, why did I bother? Well, and, and that's where, you know, a lot of businesses, you know, even forget that even after making the sale, their job isn't necessarily done, right? Because it's about the customer experience and failure to acknowledge that customer experience, um, which starts at the store shelf, but the unboxing, unwrapping experience, right? If, uh, you know, product where you, know, you get out there, you're spending five minutes plus opening a package that you thought you know, should, be, should be doable you know, without any effort, you know, it doesn't matter how good the product is, that kind of sets the tone for how the consumers will interact with your brand and maybe even consider pro- other products within your lineup. And so um, thinking about the customer experience is sort of the uh, essence of how you go about designing product packaging, right? You know, thinking right. about the unboxing experience, thinking about the functionality of the product during the lifetime. Um, Unsealing it, experience in our, exactly. in our flexible pouch world. <laughs> exactly. Precisely. Right. But again, it applies to every type of package as well, right? I mean, it could be, it could be things that are not pouches as well. And if, yeah. If, uh, if the unboxing experience is negative and the, you know, that, that does have to change. Well, and I also just want you to think like in this case with Costco, like, you know, we're in a world today where why is that necessary? And that's something that I think you all need to think about is when you're talking about it, it's like, is it necessary for it to be this difficult? Is it necessary for it to do this? Now, if it was a piece of glass, okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's going to break in transport if I don't package it properly, if I don't have everything just perfect in it, that makes more sense to me, right? As a consumer, right? I understand I wanted that mirror to get to me safely. So like those make complete sense to me. But when you're talking about something, it's like, it made me feel like they put theft Right, the, somebody tampering, and the, I mean, who's gonna mess with the with the whole package of it? Right, it doesn't make any sense over my well-being as their customer, as their member. Exactly. And so, thinking about that, that like that's the thought process you want to go through as the purpose of pointing out about your unboxing or unpackaging experience. Right, making that what is the perception that's going to come up in their mind as they're opening this is like this is a quality product or this right. is ridiculous. Like that's right. what goes into their mind. That's not good. That's not good. No. And again, the customer experience has to be the underlying theme in terms of the, you know, in terms of your product design as well as the package design, right? Any aspect of, you know, a negative interaction with the customer, that's, that's, that's going to, that's going to change the, the, the tone basically. That's right. So let's talk about the fun part. That's right. Like the pretty part of it, right. like, you know, making the package all pretty. So that's do right. you have a team that can work with people or do they need we to do. come pre-done design? 
Uh, so most of our customers, they do have uh, their designs kind of ready to go, but we have an in-house graphics department that will uh, help you bounce out ideas. If, you, you know, if you're not sure where you are, you may just have a logo. Um, you know, for example, we, we advise customers not to go online and buy a $10 logo because, you know. Please, just, uh, you know, guys, my very first article on Inc. Yeah. Million dollar companies don't buy $5 logos. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's just sort of setting yourself up for failure. Right. So, right. Uh, you know, our graphics team can kind of help bounce around ideas. And if you've got something in the works and say, Hey, what do you think? You know, we can kind of help, you know, polish that up a little bit. And well, then and I think that stuff. sometimes happens is like, you know, you do need somebody who, cause you can have a mismatch. So I've seen this really done really well where you have like, um, uh, you know, some kind of craft, product like maybe it's uh, a beautiful handcrafted soap like uh, we have this wonderful woman who makes this amazing soap that tom is addicted to she makes it out of her i mean she makes it by the river in michigan it's amazing it smells amazing it's right. beautiful but finding the right kind of packaging for it was so 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 difficult because it wasn't just about making sure that you protected it which you needed to do but it was finding something that wouldn't give it a perception that it was mass produced like it you know so you got a balance between the two so if you've got a craft product or if you've got something that has such specialty needs craft beers like you got to have you know you start thinking about these things Things as they go through your mind and of course you're hopefully not gonna put that in a flexible pouch unless you're taking uh, it to a sports well, game but you never know <laughs> right um, and so uh, again yeah at the end of the day it's a balancing act right and when you're going into your package design the package design considerations you have to think about functionality you've got to yeah. think about aesthetics yeah. and you know, graphics and logo matter there's another study I read that you know uh, you know just improving color selection can have a dramatic a statistically significant effect on how consumers react when they see it right the emotions that a certain color may elicit. Oh, so, now you're talking my <laughs> you're talking right. about exactly and, where I live so I I've been choosing colors for 26 years um, for yeah. major corporations big brands and I can tell you that it's a science. We spend right. a lot of time yeah. deciding what the colors are going to be That's for the right. next right, season right, right. and what's going to appeal and why you choose those colors. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's not just psychology, though. It has to do with your brand psychology. So if right. you're not leaving the right impression, it's highly likely it's a color problem more than it is anything else that you've chosen to do. That's right. And then because it's a because of the way that we buy things nowadays, because we're buying on our phones, right? And we're scrolling, and we go, oh, pick that. So color is the one thing we see. We don't see texture yet. It used to be texture. If you pick something up and it felt great, you right. would choose it, right? Well, uh, even if the color wasn't right, but we don't buy that way anymore. So color is the most important choice you can make. And if you're making a wrong choice, if if you're if you're not educated in it, if you're choosing what that's you right. like, that's a mistake. You have to choose what you think is yeah. what what you yeah. believe. Exactly. It goes back to the same thing again and again and again. You have to think what does the market expect and what does the customer expect, right? And how, how does that relate to the product that you're selling, right? And, and, so, and is that leaving the brand impression and the brand perception that I want it to leave? And exactly. yeah, you so, have to yeah. check that. This Picking is your something... favorite color is not the way to go. Right? That's, that's not the answer to it. And so... No, but that's where a lot of people start because they don't right. know what else to do. So exactly. guys, I'm here for you. You guys, you know, this is where you send messages. We do a, we, we do a quick consult and we pick a better color right, right. so um th yeah. this is not a hard hard thing to do this is this is something it's that is so and critically goes, important and it goes in line with the overarching question are the graphics overall aesthetics of your package your, you know this includes your logo your text your font your colors everything though you know the whole package is it in line with your target audience right because every product has a unique target audience every product um, you know, no, no product generally applies across the board and so you've got to kind of balance that a little bit and make sure that you know, not only is your color selection appropriate, but overall the placement, the sizing, um, because the, a lot of those have subconscious effects on our human psychology and how we tend to, you know, you know, pick out a product. And like you said, these days it's just on a phone. And so, right. Well, we need to make a connection, guys, between all of you, between Aperva, between Lara Hazard, um, our market research, our resident market research expert here, um, field agent who we talked to, and and the episode just went live a week ago. Okay. So between 
field agent, which can help you really dial in and find the exact right people, find people who are really there. This is our people who signed in to do market research, right? And they've signed in and they just are getting paid on their, for just doing stuff on their app and sitting on their couch. You, they make you, you geolocate you. They make sure you show that, Hey, I got kids here. Um, so I did open this package. Um, they'll show it in use. So they, they have a much stricter requirement. So you really get a right targeted audience. Exactly. And then, Lara structures questions. So like right. you can't ask someone, do you like this packaging? You can't right. say uh -huh. that. You have to ask the question properly to get at what's the problem with it. <laughs> so exactly. yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so you know, again, that's where we can kind of come in. You know, the markets that we work with you know, include food, beverage, pet food, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, um, again, you name it. And so, but all of these principles are kind of underlying and they cross, apply across the board, right? It doesn't matter what you're packaging. And so you want yes. to make sure, they want to make sure that you don't have a $5 logo, uh, like Tracy said, like what she wrote about. Uh, you want to make sure that the color selection is accurate. You want to make sure the product, uh, the packaging is functional. Uh, at the end of the yeah. day, those are, those are the three ingredients, really. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I am so excited having you on the platform. What else, you know, what's... Uh, you're seeing lots of trends and keeping up on all of that. You're going to be able to keep us surprised of that here on the platform, aren't you? What, what are you going to share with us over the next Absolutely. few months? I mean, you know, when you, when you look at it, um, I will say one of the things that people are surprised to note is that packaging trends in general start overseas and then make their way westward. Um, and so Europe and I'm Asia, not surprised, but most people are. <laughs> a lot of people are surprised to hear that. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's where things start. And so, you know, we, we see, uh, for example, on the beverage space, right? You know, we're, we're now doing like, for example, wine in flexible packaging or, yes. uh, you know, box style bags, right? Or a uh, bag in a box. And there's so many different, you know, concepts and cool variations that slowly make their way to market. And again, a lot of times they're tested and tried overseas. And so, um, you know, we're happy to share with you trends and things that, uh, that we observe and that we're seeing because we're sort of at the forefront of that um, and help give you know, your viewers an idea of sort of you know, what the options they may actually have when, they, when it comes down to picking something. Wonderful. And remember, he's going to be here to ask questions. So when you got questions, it's like, am I in an industry that is going to matter? Like, is this product going to matter? He's here exactly. to ask those questions. So I, it wouldn't be product launch hazards if we didn't talk about the stuff that goes wrong. Right. right. And that's really why you're here. That's why all the experts are here because we've been there, done that again and again. And we've, we've watched the mistakes. We've made them. We, <laughs> we experienced them firsthand. We had pain from them. Right. So I'd love to know if you've got a story or two about some of the things that really went wrong because of wrong package choices from some of your clients or some of the people you picked the pieces up for. Yeah. And you know, uh, you know, there's actually a number of examples that, uh, you know, this is, which is how you know, one of our premises were growing, really. And so we've had so many customers that have sort of bought generic off-the-shelf packaging. In the flexible world, that means going online and you know, buying uh, a case of unprinted bags, which we, we manufacture those as well. But unlike a lot of resellers, we actually manufacture it ourselves. We have sort of a quality control check. We have appropriate materials and make sure it's sort of fit for purpose there. Uh, but a lot of customers will do that and they'll go on a road show with the new product and uh, you know, not really think about what materials are there, what they need. And then they come back and say, oh crap, my, uh, you know, my, my product leaked during uh, a presentation or something, right? And so uh, that's when they come to us and say, well, what went wrong? It's like, well, you went with a you know, material thickness that was so small that, you know, what do you expect, right? And so um, countless stories where we kind of come in and say, all right, well, this is, this is what you were doing you know, that, that could use a little bit of help here. And we will now go back to the drawing board, custom design, custom engineer it so that you do have that functionality aspect and at the same time advise them on, all right, now let's make sure that we've got the whole custom branding, everything ready to go. And so, um, yeah, it was- You mentioned to me when we talked the first time about salt and like yes. people don't realize that like some products you put inside of packaging actually like corrodes your materials, right? You, right. It can make, it could, it can deteriorate the package from the inside out. It can. And, and salt's a good example of uh, where, uh, you know, salt is, 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 very susceptible to moisture right and so it clumps up when you have uh, salt in the presence of water and so uh, you, know, you might go off the shelf and buy a standard polyester bag that uh, you want to package your salt in but then you don't you realize that polyester is great at oxygen barrier but not so great at moisture barrier well most food products do have a sensitivity a higher sensitivity to oxygen but salt now has that moisture barrier so we would put a polypropylene layer in there to kind of make sure that you have that improve moisture barrier characteristics. And those are the small, subtle things that brand owners may not always be aware of. And so, 
Um, so this is this just happened to me recently. So I bought um, garlic um, supplement, right? Like a garlic right. supplement, and they're like, and in in a um, in just a bottle, like your typical supplement bottle. And I think they thought, oh, that'll be just fine. Yeah. But it's not because <laughs> it still gets hot on the shelves, right. and it still right. warms up the little plastic coatings on there. So exactly. they're all clumped together, and I seriously can't get my finger in and like get it small enough to like pull them all out. And it, if you start to pull on them, like with tweezers or, or chopsticks or anything, they yeah. pop apart and they bust and you can't use them. Exactly. So like, it's a huge problem. Like that would have been the perfect product to package completely differently than other exactly. supplements. Exactly, you're right. And so- And make them so that they don't have that problem where no light can get to them, heat, heat resistance. Right, and, and you know, we talked about the, the, the metalized layer before and so certain products, uh, protein powder is one of them and uh, you know, yeah. garlic supplement is another one where they're very sensitive to UV ingress, light, right? And yeah. so that's where we would say, okay, no, you're not going to go with a metalized film. You're going to go with an actual aluminum foil layer in between because that effects, you know, effectively blocks out 100% of all incident UV or light into the bag. And so you know, that's kind of the insight that we might have in guiding clients in terms of how do you select the material, right? Yes. And so, uh, you know, small things like that, you know, you can have, you can do absolutely everything perfect all the way from product design, engineering, um, prototyping, and then delivery. And then you mess up on one thing there and, you know, the customer experience is ruined. And, you know, that's where you have to go back to the drawing board. Right. Well, and for most people, this is why, this is why I brought him here to you guys, product launches. This is why Affirma and Flexible Pouches is on our platform here, right? is that this is the thing. We don't have a lot of runway when we're a small business, That's right? right? Yeah. When we're a brand new startup brand, we do exactly. not get to make mistakes. That's Big right. companies make mistakes all the time, but they have, they can recover from it. They can That's recover. Right. We cannot, we spend too much money and now our business is done. That's right. And so that's really why you cannot make these small rookie errors. You need that's an right. expert, you need help and you need to get them early. Exactly. And again, our, our focus has always been on the small companies, on the startups, on the new product launch, on the companies with a limited budget and trying to stretch their dollar to make sure that they get the most, uh, Biggest bang for the buck, really, at the end of the day. Uh, and so well, I'm so excited to have you on my personal team. In fact, I was just making a little, couple little notes over here going, oh, we could do this package. Oh, right. we could do this product for this client. And I actually just came up with a brainstorm for a client who's looking for a whole new product line. Absolutely. So, like, we're going to be playing together some more here. Right. So, That's I'm super excited fun. about that. So, guys. As you know, all the experts are on their expert profiles on the productlaunchhazards.com website. Um, you'll be able to find a perfect there. You'll be able to find all of the things. He's given us a great slide share about his company and everything. So that will be posted there as well. Um, I'll also put it in the documents area. So guys, if you go to one of the two areas, you're going to find it. Um, he's going to be back next month and do a, his first Q&A. And if we're going to live stream it. Super excited to be live streaming all our experts so you can be asking them questions as well. And so anyway. Thanks so much, Product Launchers, for joining us today. Thank you, Aperva, for becoming one of our members and one of our experts. And um, everybody, please stay tuned for next, for next Thanks time. Thanks so much, Tracy. Can't wait. Take care.